I have to admit, he's got a much cooler title than, let's say, Peter, I mean, Professor of Marketing. All right, that's okay. Professor of Electronic Commerce. Now that's a really good title. So it, it's really an honor to have Martin with us today, and um, uh, let's welcome him. Well, thank you very much for the introduction, and also thank you to, for organizing this conference and for having also this, um, this grand competition and for supporting us. So uh, it's really great to be here and to have so many people in this audience who are so deep into this topic. My name is Martin Spann, and uh, this is work co-authored with Dominic Molitor and Philipp Reichert, and we are all from the University of Munich, which would be a little... Uh, closer, uh, shorter name than the official name. And um, <laughs> what uh, I want to talk about today is um, location-based advertising. And there we focus mainly in this study on location-based coupons. And so the idea is at the end of the day to somewhat determine, well, what's the impact of distance if we have information through our smartphones about competing offers at some stores where we get a discount based on the coupon. If we think about retailing, two aspects which we think may uh, substantially or fundamentally transform um, the purchase behavior. And then, uh, one is um, if you're somewhere around and you use a device or an application where you get uh, mobile coupons based on where you are, so using your um, GPS data, and then presenting you with coupons which are in your near vicinity, apparently these are, uh, will have higher relevance to you because if there is a good offer, you may just walk a certain distance, and of course the closer the distance, the higher the relevance for you. One question we want to answer is what is this trade-off you're willing to accept for price versus um, distance? Um, well, what are further possible impacts of location-based services on consumer behavior? And here we try to somewhat um, structure them according to the four Ps. And um, I already talked about getting information about prices. Of course, we heard several times about um, targeted ads. Of course, one sort of targeting is to show you a coupon which is close to where you are, so most likely you have higher relevance. But additionally, of course, you could think about deciding which coupons to deliver to a customer based on the position, but also based on the time of the day. So maybe some coupons work better if you're closer <laughs> by in the afternoon than in the morning. And some other ideas would be, of course, you could uh, price discriminate based on um, distance. So if you know that um, you need to compensate for distance and someone is further away, then you might think of dynamically uh, having, giving a higher price reduction than if someone is closer by the store. And finally, of course, you somewhat, if you use all these instruments, you might have some channel conflicts if you're, by, for example, also selling via an online channel over the mobile device versus your offline store. Of course, what is our theoretical basis we need to think about? and knowing the audience is many practitioners. I don't want to spend too much time on it. But of course, one question is, what is the impact on consumer search costs based on these location-based services? And we know already that, um, and we heard about it, that uh, these devices, mobile devices, smartphones, since they are smaller, of course, search may be more strenuous. So this may have, uh, let's say, an increasing impact on search costs. But on the other hand, you know now that what is the price in this store 400 meters away. Distance has an impact. And then the question is, what is the trade-off between distance and discount? And also, well, finally, that's also more for motivation. Most research until, let's say, very recently, with respect to mobile devices was mainly uh, survey data. And now, and that's what we are seeing here, we are now have access to behavioral data, rich observed behavioral data, which we can use in order to analyze such questions. If we think about the direct effects, our predictions are rather straightforward. Further, this so if the distance is larger, then you are most likely, less likely to, um, to 
to choose a coupon, to redeem a coupon. Also, of course, if the coupon face value, the discount is larger, you're more likely to use this coupon. So that's quite straightforward. And with respect to this trade-off between face value and um, distance, we predict that um, distance, physical distance, and the cost to travel physical distance will dominate um, the discount value which is given. But these are our predictions, and let's see what um, our data and our result told us. The data we are using is an application, it's a service provider, which is a platform for coupons. So you can download an app of this provider, and then if you open the app, based on your physical distance, physical location where you are, you get a list of um, coupon offerings sorted by distance. So basically two clicks you make in order to get the coupon. First click is to inform yourself about the coupon details and second click is to the decision to get the coupon in order to be able to use this coupon. And well, this is just to, um, structured a little bit more and we, we call this first click, as I said already, the, oops, the information click and the second one is the click, the choice to redeem the coupon. But of course, and that I have to say already here, we observe the, this choice to get the coupon, but we have not the data what actually happens in the store. So, and this, of course, I think we had it, heard it already, is some technical challenge. So, there are some uh, retailers who are able to scan such a code, and then you would have information, but of course, there are also some small shops, a bakery who just doesn't have the technological uh, capabilities in order to get this information. So it's, it's quite uh, diverse. Uh, we have, we, we study uh, uh, close to 150,000 logins by more than 30,000 customers. And we have uh, here 17,000 first clicks to get more information about the coupon and more than 6,000 clicks to redeem the coupon. So what you see here is all this stage one is um, the decision to inform yourself about the coupon, and stage two is the decision to get the coupon. And so if we first look at distance, it's negative, and that's what we would expect. The closer you are, the higher the likelihood that you click. Face value, the discount value, the higher the face value, the discount, the more likely you click. Condition, so if there is a certain condition associated with it, you need to have a purchasing value of at least 20 euros you're probably less likely to use this coupon because it's a disadvantage. Also, that's what we are seeing. Rank, the higher the rank, the more likely you click. Here we see we just dummy coded time of the day and we see um, that um, the baseline is morning, so night and afternoon is a little bit less likely and evening is a little bit more likely. And in order to to quantify it, we use the marginal effects at stage two. So marginal effect meaning, well, if you have a change in distance by one unit or in face value, what is the effect on the probability that you choose a coupon? And so what would be, if you would calculate the trade-off, what is the trade-off between um, distance and face value? And what do you think? How much further would you be willing to go for a 10% discount, extra, 10% extra discount. How much further? <laughs> of course, it's, 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 it's European data, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, keep in mind it's European data. <laughs> so um, what is our result? And I think you were already quite optimistic with the uh, one mile for 10% discount, but it's not that f far away. So what we get here is that you are willing to walk a distance of 100 meters for 1% extra discount would, would be one kilometer for a 10% discount. Uh, implications, of course, implications are it has, location-based service have an effect on consumer and consumer behavior. And um, of course, what can you do? And that's what I said already initially. 
based on this information about how do the different aspects impact consumer behaviors, you could much better target, so decide on for which consumer at which um, this distance on which time of the day, which coupon, and which coupon value, and use also this information in order for dynamic um, pricing. Based on the uh, limitations, of course, it's only uh, data from one country. We don't have additional information of the offline sales, although what we started now is that we survey consumers. So what we can do is an in-app survey and then link the survey result to um, the uh, behavioral data in the app, and we don't have additional user information outside the app, what you were mentioning. So, of course, we, we, can, we know how are they using the app, but we don't have any additional demographic data unless we survey these users. Thank you very much. And here again, we have the QR code. <laughs>